Hi everybody. Sorry I got started a little late here. Let me uh, let me get Eric up on here. Thanks for joining me for another photography chat. This is uh, episode eight. Um, we're just waiting for Eric to get on the line. <laughs> What's up, JP? How you doing, man? Good to see you, Malin. Long time no see. Oh, shoot. Yeah, let's do this here. How you guys doing? What's, what's new out there in the in the world of COVID and whatever the shit? Hello, Explordinary Crew. How are you guys doing over there, Explordinary? And Barb as well. Um, Connected to mobile device. I'm happy that you're back here, JP. I'm going to have to like... I got, I ordered some new stickers. I'm going to have to get your mailing address and mail you some stickers for being my number one fan. Um, oh shit, you picked up a Z6? Damn. When are you in Toronto next? Well, we got to go shooting. I want to hear what you think about the Z6. I'm doing pretty good, um, Explordinary Crew. Um, I actually want to message you guys because I think it would be cool to have you on an episode uh, maybe later in October, if you guys would be down for that. So, um, yeah, that'd be cool. Um, things in Toronto have been not bad. We're kind of, it was chilly for a bit, and now it's uh, been ramping up, and uh, things have been getting warm again. So, that's been interesting. Uh, what's up, Not For Sale? We're just waiting for, for Eric to join us here. Um, and then we'll kick off this next episode. Um, did he get in here? Word up, Paul? Yeah. Um, it feels weird being alone on here. There he is. Okay. Let's get... Eric up on the chat. I'm doing good, Paul. How are you doing? Yeah. What's up, guys? No, just uh, just picking it off here. Look at the sky. Yeah, wow. dude. Yeah. Everything else you... is good, though. Everything is good, though. You're you're feeling good and. Yeah, yeah. Can't complain. I was trying to get this Instagram thing going on my computer, but I can't figure it out. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I should have let you know. It doesn't work on the computer. Um, you have to do it by phone, which has been, like, wicked frustrating. I would love if they would, at some point, let you do it off your computer. Um, oh, that'd be amazing. It would be wicked amazing. But, I mean, I've this is my eighth episode now, and um, I was always kind of, like, scared of doing, like, the blog things before because of, like... Um, <laughs> the editing and all that kind of shit and Instagram makes it wicked easy. Cause like literally you just be like, I'm going on the internet now. And they're like, okay, cool. And you're like, I want to invite a friend. And it's like, neat, you can do that. And here you are. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Look, there's D either Daniel or Sarah from Explordinary. Yeah. What's okay. up guys What's there. They just got back from Maine or they were in Maine a while ago. Yeah. I loved all those updates that they had going on in Maine. That was oh, uh, Jared too from Amarillo. What's up, Jared? yeah yeah it it's, been, it's been a lot of fun doing these things um it started with jason moore um we were we were fucking around on a live like two months ago and um people were like you should do this regularly and i was like you know what i kind of know a lot of photographers i can probably find at least one a week to spend an hour with me and you know talk on the internet <laughs> so Brad. yeah heck yeah some of them have to get. Dude, what's, what's that hat you're rocking? Oh, uh, it's, um, you know, that fixed gear crew, uh, MASH F SF. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just one of their hats that they did. That's I got it for I got it for work, so I don't have to wear a hairnet. That's fair. Ah, uh, it's mellow. It's good. It's got a little yeah. film guy on it. Yeah, I like the little film guy. Yeah. Um, 
Explorinary's asking uh, how you're doing. They got both of them there. Oh, Ren. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, just, uh, yeah, staying healthy, trying not to run into any more trucks. Uh, yeah, that was gnarly, but feeling better. Um, almost 100% still have, like, some swelling to go down. Still numb, like, here. Most of the, most of the nose is numb. Uh, lip is numb still, and the top teeth. I got a good little chip. Dang. Yeah. It's not bad. Do uh, doctor said like the numbness could could take up to a year to come back, but it, he said it, he's pretty confident it'll come back. What's up, Jana? Well, I, I hope the the numbness goes away because that's that's not a fun feeling, man. Yeah, chewing food is weird. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about that. that yeah, that brushing your weird. teeth with, when you can't feel them—that's that's bonkers too. Man. Yeah, I mean, when you, when you sent me those photos, I was like, holy shit, dude. That looked, like, gnarly. Did I send you the one with my nose, like, off? Yeah, yeah. You, that, I was just like, oh. dude, that's the first one I opened up. I was like, sorry for sending those, did? dude. Like, I was, I was on painkillers. <laughs> so I just was <laughs> not even thinking, just sending, like, gory photos of, like, my nose half torn off. I'm like, here, check it out. How you doing? Uh, well, I, I I think I asked. I was like, "How are you doing, man?" And you just like sent those, and it's like, "This happened. I'll chat with you later." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I got through that, just chilling. Yeah, so they uh, they put seven plates in my face because I had facial fractures. The ones they were like, because I broke both orbital sockets, Holy and then geez. across the bridge of the nose. So this whole section was just hanging. So they put a they like cut up in here. And they put a plate here, a plate here, a plate underneath this eye, a plate underneath this eye, a uh, plate across the bridge of the nose, and one over here, like you can see the scar from it, and then another one back here, because there was a break back here, too. Holy shit, dude. Yeah, that's what, uh, and then also, you know, it, it took them, it was like five hours of surgery. <laughs> well, they did and a then, fantastic job, because like, I mean... Other than other than the nose scar, you look exactly the way I remember seeing you in Tulsa. Rad, thank you. Yeah. Heck yeah, yeah. They did they did a good job. It was pretty pretty intense. So does that mean now, like when you go through airport scanners, you're always gonna like set them off or? Uh, some of the older ones do, but the newer ones, not a problem. That's not so bad then. Yeah, the only bummer is like I. I still haven't shot any photos since the accident because um, the left eye, which is my opposite eye, the viewfinder eye. Yeah. Uh, when my right eye is open, my left eye won't close all the way. So, like, the the focal plane's like, it's like a split image in the focal plane. So it's a little janky. Yeah. But uh, Jaren, Jason's wife, she was telling me to uh, try an eye patch. So I might... My yeah, I was just going to say, maybe try an eye patch. Yeah. It's like I tried using my left eye to focus, and it's just so weird to me that I can't do it. And then you're going to look like a pirate when you're out shooting photos. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> or I just flip, you know, flip it up when I'm walking around, and when I need to shoot yeah. something, I flip it down. Oh, Ryan Ackberg. What's up, Ryan? NorCal in the house. We got Brandy on here from Texas. Nice. Dang, man. It's, um, well, it's cool the Explorinary Cats are here because, like, I, I watched that Our City video recently, and, man, I really love that video. It's It was a cool video, and I really, I liked your spot, man. Like, Thanks. Uh, that, dude, that's so nice of you to say. Thank you. That was, uh, it was really quick. Like, we had, every, everybody had, like, basically a few hours, and then, you know, Daniel and Sarah, like, they, they worked their tails off because, like, they're the ones who had to go and meet up with everybody in that in that documentary like you know everybody only had like a certain amount of time and uh yeah they they knocked it out and they did an amazing job on it yeah it's it's fantastic i've shared it with with a ton of people that um have been asking me about like <clears throat> photography documentaries that i'd recommend to check out and um 
I really like just like how genuine everyone was on the spots. Like it was cool to hear like, you know, people's thoughts on like how they shoot and what they do. And I really love the way you interacted with the people on the street. Like that was, that was cool. Yeah, I mean, that was essentially my backyard for years, like Skid Row, Skid Row adjacent, um, Garment District, like all of that, like I was smack in the middle of it. So it was, uh, yeah, I was, got to know quite a few people and, you know, it was definitely, uh, it was a good experience. That's cool, man. Yeah, oh. they're, um, Daniel and Sarah, pretty much anything they touch turns to gold, like they're, the Ilford documentary. They did amazing. That um, documentary is so cool. Like I, I hit up Michael Bain after and I was like, Michael, how do I get a golden ticket to like see <laughs> <laughs> uh Paul Pena is asking uh what documentary? Uh that's the Our City documentary. I believe if you go to Vimeo and uh search Explorinary, their all of their documentaries are come up and uh I believe our city might still be on there. Yeah, uh, it, it's, correct me if I'm wrong, Daniel. So it it's still there. I found it the other day, uh, Paul. You can also just Google "Explorinary Our City" and it should come up uh, with that. It's I think it's like 30 minutes, and um, it's really cool. Like it's uh, it's a very cool documentary, and it made me really want to fly to LA, but you know the world ended, so we can't do that right now. <laughs> Yeah, I want I want to come out back out to Toronto someday. Like uh, I was out there twice about nine or ten years ago, and uh, yeah, I had a I had a fun time. Dude, it's a great city for um, for photographing. The people are interesting here. There's lots of interesting stuff to see all over. Um, I mean, it's a big reason why I'm shooting again. Like I don't think I would have ever gotten back to photography had I not moved here a couple years back like it was a mixture of like moving to Toronto and then meeting Jason in Boston that sort of set off this whole film photographic adventure like through Armand because Armand and I got close in Boston and then that like got me into the Policons and then from the Policons it just exploded and it's been the last three years has just been such a wild ride yeah Jason's kind of been a catalyst for a lot of people as far as like you know, getting getting back, either getting back into it or getting, you know, getting away from whatever, the, you know, not to, like, I don't have a problem with digital. I think I've said it before, like, digital has a place, but, you know, he, he definitely helped me break away from, from digital and, and go uh, strictly film. Yeah, it's, I mean, digital definitely does have a place, but film, there, there's... There's something special to film. Like for for you, what is it about film that you really love? Um, just all the different, you know, the different film stocks is one thing, and uh, the fact that it it slows everything down. Yeah. You know, you're not just firing off, you know, hundreds of pictures and then going home and looking through your files and and then deleting like everything. It's like you have to slow it down. Think about what you're shooting. You know, um, think about what you want the end effect to. Like, you know, I do a lot of um, pushing and pulling, and um, and then depending on what I want the end effect to be will dictate whether I process at regular speed or process at either the pushed or pulled speed. Like a lot of times with um, Delta thirty two hundred, I'll I'll shoot it at sixteen hundred, but then I process it at thirty two. Okay. Yeah, so you get it kind of just brings out like some shadow detail a little bit, things like that. Not a lot, like not as much as like when Jay Ravel does. Like, you know, he'll he'll stop down thirty two hundred, like all the way down to a hundred. Holy shit. And yeah, for look for like his night photos. And then he'll process it, it at thirty two hundred still or? No, he's he'll process it at a hundred. Okay. So he'll pull it to 100, shoot it as if it's a 100-speed film. So he's doing crazy long exposures. And then he'll process it at 100 also. Damn. So it really brings out, like, the detail and the shadows. You're not, you know, the whereas, like, if you shot it at 3,200 and you process it at 3,200, you're going to lose a lot of that detail. Like, a lot of the blacks get really stepped on. Yeah, yeah. So, 
you know, you lose different things where there could be like some cool stuff, like whether it's like leaves, grass, you know, depending on like just just going off of what, like what Jay shoots, you know, he shoots a lot of different like houses and parks and things like that at, at night and like landscapes and stuff. So, you, um, yeah, you're losing a lot of detail when you when you're shooting box speed. So when you stop it down that far and then process it at that speed that you shot it at, it brings it. Uh, Barb, Barb has a question there. What does that do to the grain? Uh, it depends on the on the film stock, uh, but most of the time it, it you know, because I think he shoots HP five a lot, which is inherently a, a grainier film anyway. But he, I know he's been shooting Delta lately, which is a super smooth grain. So you, you know, it's not like digital where if you shoot at a higher ISO, you get like that noise in there. Yeah, it it kind of does the other. It, it smooths it out a little bit. Nice. And Paul says he has a lot to learn about the development process. I mean, Paul, now's your time. If you have any questions, you know, you've got um, Eric on the line here. You can, you know, for anyone, you know, this is a, you know, the photography chats are an open forum. So if you have questions, feel free to fire them in the chat window. I'll answer as best as I can. That's fair. Um, Paul is asking different developers also have an effect, correct? Yeah. Um, I know. Jay, sometimes we use Kaphanol. Okay. Uh, so he'll, um, but yeah, different different developers will have different effects. Uh, uh, Jay would definitely be more of a person to talk to about the different, because he uses a, all kinds of different, I know he just has like the, uh, what is it, the darkroom cookbook or, or whatever that, uh, uh, I think it's the darkroom cookbook, but basically it has all the different okay. different things you can do with different developers and stuff like that. That was uh, Jay Ravel, you said? Yes. Okay. I'll Jay Ravel, it's... straight out of Japan. Um, Brandy's asking if Weasel has a favorite camera and or film stock. <laughs> yeah. Uh, his, his... <laughs> Man, no, I don't know. He... It seems like he knows when I'm trying to take a photo of him because he'll uh, all of a sudden he gets really happy and really excited and and uh, but I would say probably any Polaroid format was was always his go to. Nice. I I could I could see Weasel being a Polaroid guy. Yeah, particularly like the the Landcam 250, you know, the old peel, the ones that shoot the peel apart, the pack film. I I've got a 250. It's my favorite one. I, yeah, uh, same here. I wish I had friggin' film for it still. I still. Oh, what's up, Claire? Long time no see. I mean, hey, David, thanks for joining. Um, I still have like a small stash of FP100 that I've been sitting on for a while. I thought about selling it because like it's so crazy expensive, but then I'm like, if I ever want to shoot it again, I'm not going to buy it at the prices it's at right now. Oh, yeah. I used to get 3000B at Freestyle for $9 a box. <laughs> man think about that one <laughs> well, this this is what it kind of sucks for me because like i only got into film in like the last three and a half years um so like when i started getting into it i think it was, fp was still like 30 40 bucks a box um but i found a bunch of it on kijiji it's like our version of craigslist in canada um i found a bunch of people like offloading some like expired shit so i like just went on a tear like buying all of the expired stuff i can and that's what i've been i think it's all expired now isn't it well yeah it's a, the the last production run was like late 2018 or something um so even the stuff that they're selling is like new and fresh in in any photo places that have it is from 2018 um but i've shot some like stuff from 20 2004 that's been fine um, like the colors look fantastic in it. FP 100 though, I've noticed has like that weird sort of like chemical burn partway through it. it. I just can't get away from it with the FP 100, uh, B, but the FP 3000 is always like, are so you still, are you storing it too cold? Maybe. Um, I'm not sure. I, they're just in my fridge and I've got it set, like not super chilly in there. So maybe it's too cold. 
maybe the person I had it before me didn't uh, didn't store it right. Possibly because the the all the FP one hundred B is from like the same dude. Um, mm. but it's yeah. I mean, I call I call it unicorn tears because like every time you pull it out of the thing, it's just like one less tear in the unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, Jared, get yourself a, a camera that shoots peel apart film. Don't be scared. Yeah, dude, just try it. At least a couple packs. Yeah. For sure. It's fun. And the, the Super Sense stuff is actually not bad. I've been shooting a bunch of that in the one instant. It's really beautiful. Um, I. I like it. Like a lot of people were sort of like shitting on it because the uh, positive is an expired 20 by 24. So the colors do like, it does look like an expired um, photo because it is technically expired, even though it's a new negative and, and developer. Um, but it's beautiful. And I really want to see like where they take that and possibly maybe they can get the cost down. And But I mean, that's still an alternative if you're wanting to get into uh, pack film cameras to you know have something that you can still shoot uh paul's asking if we're planning on getting into the new four by five back for lomography i'm curious about it hi cat uh, i don't know i haven't i haven't decided yet i mean it, it looks interesting we'll see i i mean i definitely want to wait a little bit because like even like the the new type 55 you know they're doing uh they had like that weird type, like they were redoing Type Fifty Five, but yeah, it yeah. was like a, it was like a two-step process instead of a one-step, you know, like normal process. Yeah, because you still have you have to fix the you have to right you have to yeah you have to around. you have to carry around some fixer with you. Yeah, but I think they did like a stage two of it where now you don't have to use fixer, but okay. I still I still haven't heard anything about it. Yeah, I haven't I haven't tried that, but I did hear that they also brought back um, like single shot like Portra and Ektar and stuff too, which that was kind of cool. Like they they made like a version of Ready Load kind of. Really. Yeah. Damn. Right. That I guess I gotta stop watching Dodger games and uh, <laughs> pay attention. Yeah, I got excited about that because like, man, I love Ready Load. Um, yeah, it's, I, I did a tour of the Kodak factory last year and that was like one of my first questions when the guy's like, does anyone have questions about Kodak? I'm like, when are you bringing ready load back? And <laughs> he's like, yeah, Jason was already here earlier this year and grilled a bunch of dudes about that. So, you know, let's not talk about ready load. <laughs> yeah. I think he shot like all of the ready load he had left for the, the Oklahoma book. Oh shit! Like the one, the show we were in Oklahoma for. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think the last of his ready load was shot, all going into that book. Yeah. That was a cool exhibit. I really liked. Uh, I really liked those photos, and I'm looking forward to the book. Hey, yeah, the new book will be good. Yeah, yeah, he's. And I, I saw that Raymond's working on a Polaroid book. That's going to be exciting. Yeah. Ray, Ray's stuff's amazing. Like, all, I've seen some of his his Time Zero stuff, and, like, just it's all spectacular. Like, the stuff from when he was traveling for, was, you know, for skateboarding and stuff, like, yeah. some of that stuff's gnarly. Like, he did a, he did a print release a while back, and... Uh, it was a limited run of prints and he did a, it was a diptych and it was in, in Brazil. Like these guys would come along the boat, like they were on this boat for X amount of days and these guys mm -hmm. would come up and he did a diptych of it and sold, you know, just made it into one print instead of the two. Oh, what's up, dude? What's up, Brian? Good to see Siri with Brian here. And Jason, what's up, Mighty Peril? Oh, look at this guy. He's all... Hi, buddy. Whoa. <laughs> what up? Who's that? That's awesome. <laughs> hey, buddy. Yeah. How's it going, Weasel? Who's that, Weasel? Who's that? 
<laughs> it's, it's cool that he graced us with his appearance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> easy, easy killer. Do you have um? Do you have any projects or like any books that you're planning on working on? Or uh, I had a few lined up that I was gonna do. There's um, one. Oh. There was one that I was going to do that I was actually going to release in the spring. Uh, but the, um, the, uh, the racetrack that I was shooting the photos at, cause it was all, all surrounding the San Anita horse track. Okay. So, uh, um, yeah, the, uh, the track closed down. So I had to put that one on hold. And then there's another one of, uh, air raid sirens that i was that i was working on yeah i remember i think i saw some stories that you were posting on that one yeah i did that and uh is that ben so yeah i gotta finish shooting that and then there's a, a third one that i'm work that uh the concept is already there it's just a matter of going out and shooting the concept now nice so essentially i had three in the works but that all just fell through as soon as uh COVID decided to just ruin everybody's party <laughs> so what is like what's the COVID experience been like for you so far I mean everyone's had their sort of take on it but like yeah uh it's flipping sucked <laughs> um, you know it just just be uh just to be on the safe side, I didn't go anywhere for months. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't working at the time when it all, when it all like unfolded or I was working, but then like, as soon as the, the first shutdown happened, the guy I was working for, he said, yeah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna reopen. And that was after like a month and a half. So I was just like freaking out. Yeah. And uh, then like mid May, I got another job with a, a friend's company and thankfully i just that's actually kept me sane like you know just going and because i still like you know there's things open like you can go eat at restaurants outside and stuff like that but it's like yeah no i'm good if i do if i do that i'll just get food to go and then and uh, either eat it in my car or come back to the house yeah i've been doing a lot of a lot of takeout in the new world or cooking at home big time the uh the work thing is i didn't realize like how important having a job was for like sanity until like i wasn't allowed to work after the accident so i can i can get like why you're stoked to be back at work right now because i'm kind of losing my mind not being allowed to work right now which is like part of the reason why i started doing these like chats and stuff is just to like have something to be disciplined about a bit and keep some sanity. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's been Brandy says hashtag <laughs> understatement. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean I'm bummed about COVID because like um if if it hadn't happened, like I'd be in Texas for today. Yeah, I mean, you were at one point. You were talking about coming out. Uh, I know a friend of yours was talking about coming out. Uh, Jared on here, he was actually talking about coming out. So there was like a lot of people lined up like in the spring to come out, and yeah. you know, spring into the early summer, and that like once that all happened, it was just done. Yeah, like because Ray, yeah, Raywin was gonna head out there. Um, I wanted to go down there to like you know visit a bunch of people. Um, and it was, it was weird. Cause like I did go to California in February for the Policon 4.5, the Bay area one. Um, and that was like, that's the last trip I took because like, that was, we like the, the morning I left was like that evening they shut San Francisco down. And that was like, that was such a weird experience being in San Francisco, like leading up to the shutdown, like watching that city like clothes it was fucked up man oh yeah like daniel and sarah they were uh they were in nepal 
and like they had to come they were coming back like right as everything was happening yeah yeah that's right i remember seeing their nepal posts and stuff and like Oh, um, Jason's got a question here. When it comes to planning for a book or zine, what comes first, the concept or the locale? Do you visit a place and then come away later thinking, hey, this might be cool? Um, it's different for everybody, I think. I mean, um, for me personally, um, you know, if I have content, I'll go, I'll go off of that and uh, just play it from there. If... Uh, but that, like the the third book I was talking about, like that's definitely mm -hmm. a uh, that's a uh, that's a concept first type situation. Then it's just a matter of going out and and uh, shooting the content. Nice. That's a great question. And Jared says he still has his plane ticket on hold. Good call. Yeah, I mean, I I was half tempted because <clears throat> they were talking about opening the border up September 21st of just saying, like, fuck it and flying down to Texas because Policon is this weekend. And, um, you know, if things were different, I'd be in Texas right now eating Tex-Mex with Armand, like, right this moment. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, but I'm in Toronto um, not eating Tex-Mex, so... That's all right. Tex Mex isn't going anywhere. No, it's not. It's not. And, you know, neither's Denton. And, you know, hopefully everyone stays safe and, like, stays staying and healthy so that, you know, we can all see each other in the future. Like, that's that's the only thing that, like, worries me so much lately is, like, just seeing how crazy shit's been going in the States. And it just makes me worried for all my homies down there. Or it's just like, God damn, like, I know most of my friends are super responsible and it just sucks that they have to be around a bunch of irresponsible people in such a crazy time. Yeah, it's a, it's a little frustrating, but at, at the same time, like, you know, you can't let it wear you down and, you know, it's not going to stay like that forever, you know, fingers crossed, but, yeah, fingers um, crossed. you know, you just gotta, gotta stay positive and just keep doing your thing. And like, you know, like we were talking earlier, like having a routine, like even, even if I wasn't working, I would still have like a daily routine, like, because even like I'm on my days off when I'm not working, I still, you know, I'm up at six. I take weasel out by seven and, I, you know, make breakfast, I, you know, depending on what I have lined up that day, I, I'll either, um, you know, ride the bike, you know, things like that. Um, do take care of all my chores and shit like that. And then, uh, you know, I try and eat the same time every day. Uh, and then the afternoons, you know, I eat by like five thirty or six. Don't eat after s anything after seven. Yeah. Usually like six, I take Weasel for a walk. We'll walk like f five, six miles, and uh, come home, wind down the night, do it all over. Like you know, just gotta have like uh, <clears throat> yeah, just a routine so you don't get distracted. Yeah, that's a good call. Because it's, it is really easy to get sucked into, like, just the, I guess, the drama of, like, everything that's going on, and um, a, routine, a routine would be, like, really helpful with avoiding that. Kaz says having pets helps a daily routine, uh, regular, yeah. Oh, yeah, big time. <clears throat> big time. Well, Definitely. She she's got she has a mighty she has a mighty boy um he's a 150 pound uh lab and uh dane well he's a big boy <laughs> i love that guy his name's onus um yeah brandy says the black hole of depression yeah it's it's hard to avoid the black hole of depression and like jared said we'd be crying at a waffle house right now i mean We'll do that in the future. We'll definitely go have a fry in a Waffle House one day, man. I like how a lot of times uh, the the W is always out in the Waffle House signs at night. <laughs> the Waffle House. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's funny. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the things I really miss in the old world is just like 
sitting in diners with like a pal just having some coffee and like chatting scheming talking about the world and things and like you know just that kind of stuff oh yeah yeah diners like just going out for like sitting down and having a meal with yeah with you know with a friend and you know that's uh hopefully someday yeah and, you know, maybe 2021. How's, uh, like getting back to Toronto for a second, like, yeah. how's Chinatown? Like, you get, like, you guys have one of the largest Chinatowns that I've ever, I think yours is bigger than New York, right? Um, I'm not sure if it's bigger than New York, but yeah, it is, it is a, a quite a big Chinatown. We've got two of them too. There's like the the Chinatown downtown, and then there's like an old Chinatown that's a little bit smaller, but also really interesting. And yeah, Brian, there's ice cream sandwiches in San Francisco. I still fucking think about those, dude. That was a that was a good time. Oh, did you guys? Uh, it's it. Did you guys get uh, those? It, they were like the they're made locally there. Um, fuck, I can't remember the name of them now. But they were like it was like oatmeal cookies with like ice cream in them and they were just because brian and mary we we all shared a hostel we stayed at the green tortoise in like the stripper district and i fucking love that place like if you're ever in san francisco that's like one of the best places to stay because like you get a private room there for like super cheap and um the area is like really cool there's lots of like nice restaurants and like lots of color for like shooting photos there um but yeah, the Chinatown here, it's still pretty vibrant. Um, it it fared pretty well in the COVID times. Like a lot of other parts of town had a lot of businesses shutting down, but like Chinatown still did pretty good. Um, it's still like super vibrant. Like it's, it's almost a little sketchy a little bit. Um, well, yeah, and Kat sees a lot more of it. She lives in, like, the Chinatown area, and there are a lot of businesses suffering. There's a lot of – yeah, she's right there. There there was a lot of race, racism and xenophobia against the Asian community when COVID was, like, really taking off. Damn. Um, yeah, it was brutal. Like, there was a lot of lot of bad stuff with that when, when COVID first started, especially because, like, that whole, like, it came from China thing, and that was really – that was really fucked up to watch because it's just like, just because these people are Asian doesn't mean they have coronavirus. Like that's a weird. Or did they have anything to do with it? Yeah. Like that was like a, that was super upsetting to like see that shit go down and just the abuse that a lot of people have, like when they go into stores, like there's a lot of people that fight about like having to wear their masks in stores and there's, been a lot of violence towards um a lot of the shopkeepers in chinatown and like other parts of town when like enforcing the the mask stuff which i mean if you're it, it's just it seems stupid that people are still fighting about like having to wear a fucking mask this far into the pandemic like just wear it right like it's yeah um, yeah those people that have like no comment oh, i mean whatever like whatever their problem is like maybe they have an internal head injury i don't know but like they you know they just because they don't know anybody that's had it they're like oh it's fake or whatever it's like come on well and and cat makes a good point too that it also happened during sars in 2003 and people that were there then said it was similar um to the sars stuff but worse this time around oh wow Uh, which i mean like, like that's one thing that's and I, I've talked about this, um, you know, with a lot of friends, but I don't think I've talked about it on any of the lives, but um, Canada is a really racist country. We just have a good marketing team. Um, <laughs> like it's in, in some ways I personally find I've had more racist experience in Canada than I have traveling the U S um, and that's been like a, a weird thing for me to learn that like the country I call home and grew up in and live in is actually a very like ugly, toxic place. Um, like we have just brutal atrocities that are still happening like right now 
where like, like you, know, you have people living in third world conditions that the government should be taking care of that um they're they're not and it's just being like really hidden and um then anytime it comes up it's like oh well it's just because like you know the first nations people are like drunks or drug addicts and stuff like that and that's why they live in such squalor and it's like well no they are living in squalor because the government that's supposed to take care of them is not taking care of them um and just like making up excuses for it so yeah canada is like it's kind of a fucked up place too someone like they called it maple washing so like you know canada has been very like maple washed over and so a lot of people outside of canada think of it as this like sort of socialist utopia where everything is cool and everything is good um but it really isn't and like i've seen it firsthand like i've done work with first nations communities and i've lived in a lot of small towns um when i was growing up and stuff and like i've seen i've seen how bad canada can be and um it's really disappointing that that it's like that damn that's a bummer yeah it, it kind of is so but we have less covid here because we have less people <laughs> That's good. I think um, the the total population of Canada is less than that of California. Holy shit! Yeah, that's yeah. gnarly. Well, and it is kind of wild when you think about that because, like, Canada for such a big geographic space is actually a very small small country. Um, I think we're like just maybe thirty four. A million people something like Damn. that yeah like toronto is like one of the like the greater toronto area is like one of the largest population densities um here i think it's about six and a half or seven million people um and like the toronto proper area is about four million people damn yeah and then That's it gets good. smaller once you get out of there. Like I think like Montreal is like one or two maybe. Vancouver is like one and a half. Um and Calgary is like one. So it's like it's all pretty small. And then all of our population is really based along the US border. Thirty it's thirty eight million. Okay, so it's gone up since the last time I checked, but that's still pretty small. Um but most of it's all along the US border. So there's like large swaths of provinces that are like relatively empty. Um so it's it's interest like Canada is a it's an interesting country and it's cool to explore those those areas like when I drove across Canada when I moved to Toronto I wish I had more time to explore um, explore more of it because like it would have been cool to like photograph that kind of stuff but I wasn't shooting at that time so I missed out on it uh, Jared asks if you have any camera stock changes lately or the same old goodies. No, nah, just kind of running with the same stuff. I mean, I've been shooting like um, uh, Rolly uh, Retro 400S. Been shooting that a little more. Um, the Deltas, I still shoot a lot. All speeds of Delta. Um, but yeah, the same cameras, like just keeping it going. Brian says that I should start my own city called Merland. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. Um, maybe one day. I don't know. I got to get over this concussion first because I can't even use Lightroom right now. Um, and Jason asks, what's your go-to never give up camera? Oh, uh, man. My little uh, Minolta X7A that I've been shooting for a while now. Nice. That's, you know, I got a 28 millimeter uh 2.8 2.8 on it um uh plus it has a uh uh advanced motor so that's about it i'd have to say my my go-to never get rid of camera is my my chunky boy f5 oh i, ha I have one of those you rock an f5 too i have one yeah it, it doesn't work right now the I think the contacts on my on the lens are bad because uh, when I turn it on, it says some it says something about the contacts not. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. I just gotta 
either stop being lazy and like clean off the the contacts or have somebody uh i I've, some... I've read about that what you should try is like a pencil eraser apparently if you get like a pencil eraser and just run it along the contacts that should oh, okay. that should clean it up and it should get rid of that air that you're getting yeah because when i was when i was shooting with that thing i loved it man dude for street fun. photography it's my favorite because like the autofocus is super good. I like the weight because it helps me be a little more stable, especially when I'm doing like nighttime shots with it. Like I could do a 15th with it handheld for the most part. Um, but what I really like for street photography is like, if someone tries to fuck with me, I can clock them with this thing and still take pictures. Oh yeah. You can use that thing as a mallet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a tough bastard. I love that. You can camera. use that thing you can drive nails and build a skate ramp with that thing. <laughs> you probably could, right? It's a hell of a camera. Definitely. What's um what's your favorite stock that you like to shoot with? Uh I like deltas. I mean I'm obviously like if I could have something back it would be it would be three thousand B, but Yeah. Um or even time you know, time zero. That was Oh man, I wish there was more times or type fifty five. I love it. Yeah, type fifty yeah, type fifty five. That was beautiful. That was a great film. What about for color? What's your favorite color stock? Uh I like Pro Four Hundred H. I like uh, you know, the portraits are good. Yeah. You know, portraits are nice. It's a. but yeah, I don't shoot color too often. I mean I I start I shot some color on the those road trips i did last year with with jason yeah and i was shooting some color on that stuff but even so it's not something i go to regularly it's just uh i don't know i, I just like black and white better see? Just like black and white jason's got a question here for you do you have any personal rules for street shooting like lines you won't cross uh yeah i mean it's um yeah, you just have to be mindful of your surroundings and, uh, you know, be respectful and don't um, don't encroach on somebody's personal space unless it's somebody you know and, like, have a, some sort of relationship. You know, I, I, I lived, you know, next to Skid Row for, for years and I would go in and, and pass out socks to the homeless and I think for the first year and a half or two years I never took a camera with me it wasn't until like some of the the locals the residents there that were living on the street were like were okay with me coming around and like I actually made friends with some of them and uh they're still like I'll still go check up on them you know nowadays like even with everything that's going on I'll still drive around until i find them and see what they're doing see make sure they're still doing good but uh yeah i just you know for for a long time i wouldn't take a camera over there i would just uh but once they were comfortable with me being around and things like that i, I definitely made a point to ask like hey do you mind if i bring a camera with me next time and everybody was pretty cool about it the ones that said nah I, was, I just didn't i just left it in the bag I, I can feel that for sure. Like my, my personal rule, like myself when I'm doing street shooting is that if I look in the viewfinder and it feels too intimate without knowing that person or asking for permission, I won't take the shot because I, I don't want to like violate someone's space or something. Or if it's like gotcha. something that I really want to get a picture of, I'll ask him like, Hey, like I do street photography. Like I liked what you're doing. Like before I interrupted you, do you mind if, you just kind of act like I didn't interrupt you and let me take your picture. <laughs> gotcha. And sometimes they're cool about that. Um, and Jared says that he's still stoked on the color Tupamkari print that he got from you. It makes it even better that you rarely shoot color. Oh, right. Thanks. Like that, uh, that empty pool, like in the old abandoned hotel, that was motel. That was, that was fun. But yeah, I'm stoked you got that. I don't even think I have one of those left. I need to. Really? Yeah, I think I need to. I wanted to print a big one, but 
right when I was getting ready to have the negative scan so I could print a big one like that one behind me that's like 24 by 36. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wanted to print one that big. But uh, yeah, COVID happened right when I was planning to get the negative scan. So. Well, I mean, I I have a surprise that you'll still get in the mail sometime, but like COVID kind of fucked up that plan because <clears throat> I went and shot a bunch of stuff that I was going to print for you but then COVID happened and I couldn't get in the dark room so I have all these negs that I'm waiting to be able to get in the dark room so I can go print up some some stuff to mail down to you nice thank you no problem man stuff. yeah I'm I'm stoked to print them I miss printing in the dark room so much like yeah yeah, I, I wish my apartment was like a tiny bit bigger so that I could have my own my own printing space here. But when the world does open up again and we're all allowed to travel, I mean, you always got a place to stay here in Toronto. Um, be happy to like show you around, show you some cool spots and like, you know, lots of food places that are sweet to check out here. Like, Nice. Heck yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem, man. Like, I mean, also to anyone that's like on the on the chat like if you're ever in toronto hit me up i love i love exploring and showing people like the cool places i've discovered um and it's just it's been a lot of fun like sharing that with people and like seeing them get all stoked about places that i like and then they get stoked and tell their friends about it so it's nice to share heck yeah what do you got planned up for the future um i got a polaroid workshop that i'm doing next weekend hopefully we'll see i was supposed to do it in march but it's like an introduction to film like in instant film photography um and in the first iteration before the world ended it was supposed to be 10 people and i was going to have like 10 different instant film cameras and i wanted everyone to rotate through them and try eat like so Instax, Mini, Instax Square, Instax Wide, Spectra, um, and then like an SX70, SLR680, and like, you know, just so everyone can like play with all the different instant film cameras. Um, but obviously swapping cameras around with a group of people is probably not a very COVID safe exercise. Um, so the new version of it is limited to eight people. Um, everyone's just gonna get a box camera and two packs of film, color in black and white. Um, it'll be like a sort of brief dive into like how instant film came to be and like a bit of the history of Polaroid and like I'll have some of the other funky cameras there so that they could check them out and like pop up a few pictures so that they can have them and then do like a, a walk through Chinatown uh, but like masks, gloves, like the, the whole thing um, and if you're not feeling good then can't come kind of thing so that's next weekend and then Lomography um, sent me a couple of um, their reusable disposable cameras, which look really fucking cool. They sent me a couple of those loaded with Metropolis. And um, I'm doing a giveaway right now on my Instagram to do like a photo walk with two people in Toronto in later in October. Um, shoot the cameras i'll get the film developed and then lamography wants to like hear from them like what they thought about the experience with the cameras and how they liked the metropolis film and then that's going to end up in an issue of uh the lamography online magazine which is going to be like kind of cool um stoked on that and then i've been helping a friend with a film collective that she's got called northern film collective and um she's working on building a book of Canadian film photography. Um, so we just closed submissions for that last month and we got about um, 60 people submitted photos in for that. And her idea with it is she wants to do like a yearly annual of Canadian film photography and Canadian film photographers. Um, so this will be like the first uh, volume of it. And then throughout the year, she wants to do like different themed zines and like you know small small release books kind of thing so um i've been helping her with that like doing admin stuff and helping curate the um the page so that she can focus on the book now that we've got all the submissions so she's working on like layout and design with that right now and 
that's been pretty cool. So it's, it's nice having like those things since I'm not allowed to work and I'm losing my mind. It's been kind of nice to have some other stuff to, uh, keep myself a little busy with within reason. Like it's still tough. Cause like I hit the bumpers of like what I'm capable of with my brain being the way it is at the moment, which has been like wicked frustrating. Cause it's like, I know I should be able to do more, but I can't. But, uh, that's what's been going on right now for the most part. Damn. That's cool. It sounds, I mean, at least you got some stuff to keep you, uh, keep you occupied. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's weird. Cause like I have all this time that I never had before and I'm like, fuck yeah. Like I can work on these like book projects I've been thinking of, but then it's like my brain's not cooperative with that kind of stuff. So it's like, I have all this time, but I don't have a lot of, uh, um, sorry. I don't have, I don't have a lot of ability. So that's been, that's been frustrating. Um, Sorry about that. My, my speech fucks up sometimes. All good. Uh, Aaron Lopez is on here. Hey, Aaron, a how's it going? AKA Slopez. What <laughs> up? Um, nah, man. Oh, shit. Jared's like, I don't want to come to Canada. It's racist. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd love to have the Extraordinary crew up here. I'd love to have you guys up here one day. That'd be wicked awesome. That'd be fun. Yeah, it's been and well. And then also doing the the these like live chats has been cool. Like I've um, been like I can't believe it's been two months of them now, and I've got like most of October booked up. Uh, like uh, Dave Rollins is joining next week, um, and then after that, Pete um, he's going to be joining in the guy that bought Jason's Lincoln. Oh, nice. Yeah, he's going to talk about his uh, his adventure with um, driving it from California to, to Massachusetts. Gnarly. Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that episode. Um, it's been cool that, like, you know, people have been digging these things and, you know, people want to take some time to, you know, shoot the shit with me about random stuff. I, I really appreciate you, like, joining in, man. It's been oh, dude, thanks. Thanks for asking. I'm stoked. Armand, thank you for the kind words, my friend. I miss Armand. That guy's the shit. Heck yeah, I'm in. I'm in. Uh, I'm in his boat. Like uh, looking, looking all different now. Yeah, yeah, dude. Well, it's crazy. Like the first time I met Armand in Boston, it was a different dude that I went and saw in Texas. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it kind of blew my mind. Dude, healthy living, it it does wonders. Yeah, I gotta get on that wagon. Jason, Jason gave me a bunch of like nutritional advice to help with the concussion stuff that I started doing about ten days ago. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how that stuff works out. Cause um, yeah, the traditional medicine stuff has been like really slow going right now. So we'll give that stuff a shot. Heck yeah, yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, Jason helped me out with some, with some stuff, uh, with, uh, uh, a while back and it's, it's worked wonders, man. It's, uh, awesome. it's helped me out for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's the, the film photography community has just really blown my mind for like how, how welcoming and amazing the people are inside of it. And just like how dope of a community is to be part of like, you know, Everyone's just like super friendly and awesome. But uh, we're coming up on the last minute of the photography chat. So, you know, again, Eric, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time. Everyone on the, the chat, thank you for tuning in. Like, fucking love you guys. Like, you know, it's. it's Thanks, everyone. It's rad that you come, like, spend this time every Thursday uh, with, with me and, and my guests. And uh, thank you, Weasel, for. You know, making an appearance and gracing us all. You know, he, was, he says thanks. I got I got to re up on some weasel stickers. Yeah, let me know where I can order those things. I uh, just I don't know if I have your address still. Just send me your address. I'll I'll send you some. Where Daniel is, actually did a rad one. Like uh, he did um, uh, he did an illustration of weasel, and uh, it was. Yeah, uh, okay. Dude, I love that one. That's the best one. 
That's All based right, off an actual class. photo too. He went, he went as, uh, he went as Elvis for one Halloween. That's dope. We're gonna lose the live, but love you guys. Thank and you then, so uh, much.